Well, we saw it. We saw Bohemian Rhapsody, and guess what? What? We are the champions, my friends. Are we? <laughs> I didn't feel like a champion at the end of that movie. We made it through to the end. They're least. champions because they took our money for it, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, guys, we saw it. Bohemian Rhapsody. Right now, the non-spoiler review on Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Boat. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, for another episode of Miscast Non-Spoiler Movie Reviews with your host, JJ. I have found that at times like these, it's the small, ordinary deeds of the common folk that keep uh, the darkness at bay. Hmm. Very interesting. That's deep. Man. And intellectual. Yeah. Yeah. And your other host, Greg Caffaro. I just want to ride my bicycle. Do it. I do. I want to ride my bicycle. Everybody feels like singing. I love my car. <laughs> I love, I, I'm in love with my car. Yeah. I'm in love with my car. <laughs> and your amazing host, William Davis Moore, right here. That's right. All right, guys. That's we're getting into it. Though. So we saw Bohemian Rhapsody. So tell me, what makes Queen any different from all of the other wannabe rock stars I meet? I'll tell you what it is, Mr. Reed. Yeah! We're four misfits who don't belong together. They're playing for other misfits. Pretty sure they don't belong either. We belong to them. Freddie, could you tell us about the rumors concerning your sexuality? Queen, how long can that last? You don't make decisions for the band. It's an experience. Something that people will feel belongs to them. Guess what the critic score on this one is? Poop, 59%. Mm, about right. Yeah, that's yeah. about what I expected. Guess what the audience score is, though? Mm, like 90% Just probably. Take a wild guess. Yeah, 90. 70? 94%. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. I don't believe well, it. Well, by the time this comes out, I always have a correction right there. It says the date. Yeah. So it's, we'll probably, it's probably a lot different. It's making a ton you, of money. Everybody loves Queen, so I imagine that just because Queen's on screen, they're just gonna love it, yep. and even if the story sucks. Yep, yep, so, yep. fifty-five million dollar budget, so it's not too bad. I can't imagine that you know. No, anybody it'll see do her. well. Yeah, uh, we'll see. It's definitely gonna make money. Yeah, I'll throw a tag up there. That's how much it made over the weekend. So there you go. Oh my god! But this Jeez. time it's not in the end. <laughs> uh, it's directed by Brian Singer. Now, Brian Singer is the guy that started X Men, as everybody knows. He's also the guy that first killed Superman. And he killed Data and Star Trek Nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot bastard. about that. That's a good one. <laughs> but he scored with Unusual Suspects and Apt Pupil. Yes. And he directed Days of Future Past, which arguably is one of the best singer X-Men's. So. Yeah, definitely. And I wanted to get into the, the whole directing thing because it was a mess behind the scenes, this, this production. Tell us, Greg. Dexter Fletcher, he's an actor. Uh, you might remember him for, play, for playing Soap in uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Um, so he was developing this movie ever since about 2010. Then about 2014, there was some creative differences. He wanted to make it rated R. Um, so with him and the producers, their creative differences, he was kind of, he kind of walked away or was let go or whatever. So they departed ways, or they parted ways. They departed. And then Brian Singer was brought on. There was a lot of trepidation about bringing him on because apparently there were stories about his behavior. and Yeah, he his messes behavior. around with little boys. I don't know how the hell this what? guy still has a career. Allegedly, allegedly. We'll go there. He's part of some what? sort of like childhood pornography ring that... Allegedly. I, I don't know. Like Other people have gotten already arrested for it, yeah. so I don't know how the hell Brian Singer is still yeah. making movies. Yeah. So he was, with him. Is that so, true? Yeah, he's had actually... For a long time, I think since like 97 when he directed At Pupil... There's been uh, allegations against him uh, assaulting a 14-year-old boy. Holy shit. And then another guy, a uh, 17-year-old yeah. boy, brought up allegations against him yeah. for uh, sexual assault, too. Um, but anyway, so he was hired to direct this movie. But anyway. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the matter at hand. <laughs> um, so uh, his behavior during the production was very erratic. He was missing days here and there, up to three days at a time. Um, his cinematographer had been directing in his absence since the beginning of the shoot. 
And then with about two weeks left to go in the shoot, they fired him and brought back Dexter Fletcher to finish it up. No shit. Yeah, so they brought him back what on. What a clusterfuck. <laughs> and, uh, and he did all the editing and everything. And, uh, and that was, you know, that was pretty much went on, what went on behind the scenes. So it was kind of a, kind of a mess. Singer claimed that he was missing time because he had to take care of a sick parent. And uh, he or he into, was the sick parent. He got into a he got into a heated argument with Rami Malek on the set and threw some equipment around, and then that's when they decided to can him. And, and he threw Rami Malek. Yeah, because <laughs> that guy looks like he weighs five pounds. Right, pretty much. <laughs> and so that, that's when they decided to bring back Dexter Fletcher. What about uh, Rami as uh, as dude? Freddy? I gotta say, look, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Rami Malek already has a weird face. He's already like a weird looking dude. And you add those teeth on him, and he looked like a, like an alien. He looked like there were scenes at the beginning of the movie where he just looked like like a pathetic, weird alien that just landed on Earth. And I kept thinking to myself, nobody would bang this guy. Wow. Nobody would bang this guy. I had those thoughts. Too. Freddie Mercury was an extremely like iconic dude that got laid all the time. He had these crazy orgies. Everybody wanted to have sex with him. And I'm looking at Remy Malik with the with the teeth and the eyeballs and like the only person that has ever been able to pull off those weird eyeballs has been Amanda Siegfried. Oh yeah. A- aside from that, he looks he looks like a like some sort of creature. I'm sorry. I I did not like him in this movie at all. I I agree. In the in the in the first few scenes in the movie, I did find him as well uh, disturbing to to try and wrap my head around. <laughs> I, I fell into him as as Mercury though. I got lost in it, and I felt like I was watching Mercury and the real band, and I forgot that real band wasn't actually the people in the movie. So yeah, I mean, I I felt myself watching his teeth most of the time, you know. And Remy Malk already has a bit of an overbite too. And they exaggerate even more. And I think they exaggerate even more than Freddie Mercury's massive overbite. But didn't they do this thing? I saw this thing with this. They had this makeup kind of on this face that made him sort of like gaunt. But it looked uh, almost maybe. like makeup. Maybe. I didn't notice that. Okay, maybe. But um, I, I felt him like he was really trying to fit his lips over the teeth yeah. for a while. And so I felt myself watching his teeth more than I was really watching his. <laughs> right. Looking at the rest of his face. But like Will said, I, I thought Malik was great. I mean, he had... The movements down, you know, the body language down, and it, I thought he was spot on. Uh, we got Lucy uh, Boynton. She's been in nothing. She was Beatrix and Miss Potter and Countess Helena in Murder on the Orient Express. I don't know. I've never seen her in anything, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I saw Murder from the Orient Express, and I don't even remember her in that one. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this name, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, Gwilym. Gwillem Lee as Brian May. That dude looked just like old boy. He was so, awesome. spot on. Yeah. He was spot, spot on, on. look wise. Um, he he's been. He was a couple of video game guy, uh, voices. Yep, he yep. was Sid in Final Fantasy uh, and Sorrow, the Manslayer in Dragon Quest. Yep. Um, Got to give a shout out to old boy from Jurassic Park, Joseph Joseph Mazzello. Yes. Yep. Um, and you know he was Mouse in GI Joe Retaliation. Can't forget about that shit, yo. <laughs> so. <laughs> I did that classic. That. I did forget about that shit, yo. <laughs> and we got Aiden Gillen, Littlefinger. Yeah, uh, it was know. nice to see him. In, totally underused, I gotta say. Big time underused. Uh, when he popped on my screen, I was like, "Oh, somebody's gonna die." Yeah, <laughs> who's he gonna fuck over? <laughs> <laughs> and he was, you know, for you, Greg. He was, uh, what was his name Jansen in the Maze Runner. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He was the villain. In <laughs> Did you get excited? Oh, I was like, oh my god! Did Thank you get god. Maze Runner goose pimples? I, I, I got a <laughs> Maze Runner chub. You know, so. Awesome. Uh, Tom Hollander as Jim Miami Beach, also yeah. under Cutler Beckett in Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah, yeah. and Isaac's in Hannah, which I think is his better role. Oh, honestly. Hannah's a great movie. Yeah, Hannah's ro- oh, freaking mm-hmm. rocking. Yeah, movie. it makes me want to brush my teeth. Yes. Thoroughly till they bleed. <laughs> so. right. Ben Hardy, who was also an X Men Apocalypse. No, no, he was cool. He was Archangel. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, he didn't have any he lines in Apocalypse, Taylor. but he was really good in this. Actually, he was pretty I, good. I he was right. Roger Taylor, so you know, I mean, no one ever. Brian no, Singer, probably buddies. You know, no one ever talks about the drummer. So, yeah. well, you got to give him a shout out. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you yeah. got to give the whole band a shout. I'm out. down with it. There's a there's a great interview on the Howard Stern show where Sasha Baron Cohen talks about like the six years that he spent working on this yep, movie. Yep, yep. And he talks about how like he wanted, you know, he he's read all these stories about Freddie Mercury and all these like outrageous like sexual things that he would do. Like Mm -hmm. Freddie Mercury would have like these crazy orgies with like little people with like plates on their head (laughs) full of cocaine. So like that seems like such an outrageous movie. And I wish he would have done that movie. But when Brian, Brian Singer essentially did a very basic, safe movie 
about an extremely outrageous character. And that to me is, is the fault of this movie. So there were several scenes in the movie where Queen was talking about, like, we don't follow formulas. You know, this is not how we make records. And uh, it's, it's really like Brian Singer kind of contradicted everything that the, that the actual performers did. I don't think this movie like is for Queen fans. I think a great movie for Queen fans is probably like Wayne's World. Wayne's World was the best movie that really yes, like right. did a tribute to Queen. Yeah. This movie is for the band members. Yeah, I agree with that. And not for the fans. Okay. It's a very ordinary, formulaic, <laughs> highly predictable movie that honestly, while there were a few moments in the movie that, that were, were that were touching, I wish they never would have made this movie. Yeah. Wow. Now since you say that, like because Brian May and um uh Roger Taylor had a lot to say behind the scenes of this movie. Yeah, I agree with that. It was pretty much their vision yeah. of how it should go. So, yeah, I agree with that. But, I mean, like we said, we were at the theater, and there were a lot of fans clapping along with the music. It was, you know? it was like, a, a you know, the baby boomer crowd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, they do not have any theater etiquette either. No, the not at all. Phones are ringing. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they were clapping like it was actually a live performance, yeah. which was, I found, you know, that made the m movie a little bit more fun. You know, just because of that, mm -hmm. uh, but that that was on top of a movie that was already flat. And, you know, Anyways. well, I feel like that's the way. That's the only reason why these people wanted to go see this movie was because they wanted to see the reenactment of the live performances. So, all right, I'm gonna save my my uh, stuff for the uh, spoiler. My my basic overview is that it, it was all right. You know, it yeah. was okay. It was seriously just if you're a fan, you're gonna love it because it's fan service and that's all it is. Yeah. There's no real I, development. So, I, I would have to disagree with that. If you're a fan you may not love it. I'm not going to say that automatically all fans of Queen are going to love this movie. At least I don't think so because I'm a fan of Queen. Well, it depends on how you're going into it. I mean, I'm a fan of Queen, but, you know, like, I, I feel like it's not a theater movie. It's the kind of movie you watch at home, you know, in the background because all they really do is just play Queen music. And that, that's what I mean by, like, fan. Like, it just brings up all their stuff. Like, it doesn't... There's nothing to develop in it. There's no yeah. real stuff i'll get into it later yes yeah. actually that, and that's one that's my last point here is that i can't wait to talk about in the spoilers so <laughs> if you guys are going to watch anything watch that spoiler because i think we're going to rip this movie a new one <laughs> all right rami malik stole the show he did a great job the rest of the movie was definitely more for the band i think mm -hmm. um but if you like queen's music this is it's a movie for you, you definitely go watch watch it to see the concert performances or live aid the live aid performance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, that's our non-spoiler. It is. Uh, everybody's anxious to get into the spoiler, so we're just going to get this over with and get on to that. Yeah, so, uh, watch it. Watch it. It's coming watch up. Out. It's coming up tomorrow. It's going to be brutal. Or the day after that, or the day I after think. that. Probably, <laughs> maybe. On your, maybe you're going to be brutal. I I'm going to assassinate it. All yeah. right. I cool. think we have some, some varying opinions. Yeah. It should be good. It'll, okay. It'll be a good one. All, right. All right, I'm excited. All right, guys, as always, if you like this episode, then hit that like button down below. And if you're not on the channel, head on over to the channel. If you're on the channel, then hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Then hit that bell next to it so you get notified of all future videos. Then head on over to miscastentertainment.com where we have awesome articles all the time. And we're going to have some merch up there, but check back in a couple days because our merch is going to change to a different location. Teespring sucks. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, we... All right. Scaramouche, Scaramouche. Oh, no, no. Nice. the Fandango. Check, 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 check. One, Everybody two, three. Check, 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 check. Oh, well, it seems to be the same. Check, 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 check. It's like, okay, I think they're on. I heard him say check. Turn the lawnmower. Now. Do it. <laughs> and go. <laughs>